Hello everyone, Sexy Hexy here, going to finally be making a gear video as I've promised in the past. Yes, the time has come. I'm going over all my gear today. We'll be going over guns, mods, my equipment, why I run Sentry. Again, this build is focused on PvP, not PvE. There's many different things you can do for PvE. And I think it's pretty much all about enjoyment for PvE. But this is my PvP build. This focus on player versus player. Let's hop right into it, though. First, we're going to be jumping into our guns here. For my main gun, I use an assault rifle. I use my assault rifle for mid to long range fights. Again, um, this is kind of what I prefer. You obviously have the M1A, which is really, really valuable. A lot of people prefer the M1A. I just like having 60 plus bullets on my assault rifle, being able to whale shots. On my assault rifle, I have deadly, balanced, and vicious currently. Uh, preferably, I'd rather have the headshot damage of brutal but this is what I got, and it actually turns out to be pretty effective. Um, again, with Vicious, I, you know, maybe cross out Vicious, get Brutal on there. It, it works for me. Uh, again, we do have Balance on there as well. Balance basically makes it so when I holster, I can laser beam headshots and just wail out the shots and keep it pretty dang accurate once, I, once I've started holstering it. That being said, Balance is apparently getting a nerf in 1.2, which is a few weeks out. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what is happening with it, but I've been told it won't be as good as it is. I think the reason they're nerfing it is because it's really insane on the M1A. It is really good on the AR as well, but I think it's re you really get a bang for your buck on the M1A. When you holster that, you can just like ta da 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 on the M1A. Anyways, that's kind of what I have on my talents for the assault rifle. For our magazines, I'm using magazine size with rate of fire. There is other options you can do here. Weapon damage, critical hit damage, so on. I prefer rate of fire on my assault rifle. Again, I'm going for headshots, so I want to be able to shoot as many bullets as quickly as possible into their head, and they can get shredded in a matter of seconds, especially with the headshot damage that I do have. Uh, for our scope, we do have the headshot damage with critical hit chance. The reason we go with critical hit chance is this is not like an SMG where you get that base crit. Uh, so I just try to stack up my critical hit chance as much as possible so I can crit a bit more often. Headshot damage again, though, probably the most valuable stat there. Uh, for our muzzle, we're doing stability with critical hit chance. Stability is super duper valuable on the assault rifles, and I'll explain in just a moment why. And then on our under barrel here, we do have stability as well. Accuracy, don't really care about it. I just got stability on it, so I started using it. The reason why we go with stability, if you're not familiar with stability, stability helps when your gun kicks, like left, right, up, down, and so on and so forth. Uh, with the assault rifle, when you shoot it, you see how it's going up? That's me just holding the button down. Now, if I didn't have stability, it would kick up a lot quicker. So the stability helps it so it doesn't go up as quickly. So when I'm shooting, I can just pull down slightly and keep my aim pretty accurate. That's why I run stability. If you are using maybe something like an M1A, horizontal stability is good for that because that's for the left-right kick, which M1A kicks left and right. Obviously, AR goes up. There's no vertical stability in the game other than just regular stability, which helps all of it. So that's why I focus on stability there, so I don't have to adjust as much. Uh, for our secondary, we have the SMG. It has pretty low critical hit chance on it, uh, but it does work for me right now. Um, it has brutal, which is funny because I'd rather flip the two guns, but brutal on this with vicious and meticulous. Uh, I, again, I'd prefer to have deadly on this particular gun, uh, but headshot damage is always still super valuable. Uh, you can just rapid fire them headshots and shred someone in a matter of seconds. Vicious is pretty nice, which is why I run uh, the overheal and the overheal on my med kit so I can keep myself full health and get that extra 13.5% crit, pretty much keeping myself at 60% only Almost at all times uh, with Savage as well um, and I'll show you my stats there in a little bit uh, magazine size I'm currently running or for the magazine I'm currently running magazine size again with critical hit damage uh, you can also run rate of fire here is extremely effective I like critical hit damage after messing with it a little bit better just because I like the I like to know that I'm just gonna hit harder in general uh, obviously it's a little slower but 
you know, if you're missing shots in the in the heat of the moment, you're jumping around, you're missing like all over the place. Critical hit damage I've just found to be a bit more valuable, uh, but rate of fire is still very very effective. Um, can melt someone if you're like just trading headshots, you know. Uh, headshot damage, critical hit chance on this. Uh, you can do critical hit damage on the scope, I believe, as well. I'm just currently using critical hit chance uh, with the headshot damage. Uh, again, on the muzzle, stability with critical hit damage. We want as much critical hit damage as possible because, again, we are going to be critical hit capped. Uh, and then for the underbarrel, I'm using hip fire accuracy with stability. And the reason why I do that, I'll explain real quickly, is because when I am using the SMG here, uh, when people are holstering like this, your movement is limited. You, you can't move as quickly. So you'll notice a lot of people will holster like this and they'll just start taking shots. Well... If I have the SMG and I'm close enough, I can run up and hip fire the hell out of them. And I can basically whale headshots. And it makes it really easy because they're holstering. So they're not moving quickly. And I'm all over the place, like still whaling shots. That's why I run the hip fire stability. I find it to be very valuable. But again, find what works for you. This is what works for me. Uh, for our pistol, I don't really care too much about the pistols. I just have this one because it has the 204 gear score. Again, that's pretty much the only reason why I'm using it. Uh, pretty much the only value, in my opinion, on pistols would be maybe something like this, where you get the bleed and you can go ahead and pop them. Once you have the target bleeding, they have to walk. They can no longer run, which can be pretty valuable when someone's running from you. Um, my double barrel is pretty good. It can actually be pretty effective. I just typically never really liked using it too, too much because it does only have two shots. And I just found that I was better off just kind of keeping the SMG out for those short range battles. But this is pretty good, and that was a drop, believe it or not. Um, now we're going to hop on into our gear here. Um, for our chess piece, we are using the Reckless chess piece. This is pretty much a staple. If you're not running this, I don't know what you're doing, at least in the, the current way the game is. Reckless is getting fixed in 1.2. Well, you're like, well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Most of you already know what's wrong with it. Right now, Reckless increases your damage by 13, 14% if it's to 204, and in, uh, increases incoming damage by 10%. This is actually wrong. It actually decreases your damage by 10% currently in the game. It is, again, getting patched in 1.2 along with Balanced, but currently right now, it increases your damage and you take less damage, and with the game the way it is there's so much damage out there we need as much damage mitigation as possible to live for these fights if you don't have it you're just gonna get flat out ran over uh we have armor on the chest piece armor on the chest piece is almost a staple as well assuming you actually give a shit about uh armor capping uh i like having it because you can get 500 plus armor on there which i think is very very valuable more valuable than a mod slot uh the health could be something different, could be exotic damage result, could be a bunch of other stuff. I just ended up getting these rolls and I kind of ran with it. Uh, again, minor could be resist, so on and so forth. This is what I got. I'd prefer to have the resist over ammo capacity, uh, over XP, whatever. Um, and then skill attribute, again, you know how it is trying to get gear. It is what it is. I just found this to be effective. Uh, for all my mods, I will be running firearm armor or stamina armor mods right now, and that's to make sure that I keep myself uh, armor capped. Uh, I have one firearms mod, and the reason why I run that is because I need to keep myself over 2,500 firearms, um, which uh, in order to get this, 2,579 in order to be able to use Brutal. So it kind of limits my build a little bit, which is a little unfortunate because I'd prefer to have more health and more stamina. Um, but obviously I don't want to give up the Brutal talent. And I was like, I think I'm like 20 away, so I have to use one firearm mod, which kind of pushes me over, but it does still work. Uh, for our mask, we're going to be using the Sentry Call mask. Uh, I do run the Sentry set, as most of you are familiar with. This is going to have stamina on it here, uh, and we run skill power on it. I found th that since um, the game has gone in this new direction, you don't have like the rehabilitate bugs and so on and so forth, that having a little bit of skill power rather than 5 to 10k is very very valuable because you have your med pack heal and then you can also use your overheal and it helps tremendously when you your heals actually <laughs> heal you for something so currently we run skill power on the mask the reason why we do that is on the mask and on the backpack you can actually get 
I think it's like four to five K on the mask. And then on the backpack, it's like five to six K. Uh, you cannot get that on the other pieces. So, I mean, assuming you ran it on the backpack as well, you could have over 20 K skill power and very, very little electronics. Um, so that's currently what we run. Enemy armor damage, useless stat for PVP. Um, but it does has pulse critical hit damage bonus, which I find to be very valuable. Um, but this could be resists or something like that would be nice. And then it obviously has the mod slot with armor. Uh, I think I do have this one too, which has the two mod slots, but, um, I prefer to have this skill power. I've really liked running it. Uh, and I think it's more valuable than the two mod slots in my opinion. Um, for our knee pads, we have a sentry call knee pads. I'm currently running critical hit damage. You can run armor. I think I have armor ones too. Um, but I found the critical hit damage to be a little more valuable. Uh, these are firearms, again, to keep me over that. I'd prefer to run pretty much all stamina mods if I could get away with it with my talents, but it's hard to get gun rolls that work like that. So uh, this is what we use. Uh, shock resist really really valuable i'd prefer to have burn resist instead of scavenging or xp but it is what it is any resist would be better than increased xp or scavenging in my opinion pulse critical hit damage and then a mod slot with the stamina armor again to keep myself armor capped backpack we are currently running a armor backpack uh with burn resist pulse critical hit damage and that's pretty much that. I do actually have a skill power backpack as well that I uh, sometimes swap to. It really just depends on what I'm doing. But for right now, I've kind of found this one to be a little more valuable as I can swap out another one of my pieces, which is my knee pad for the critical hit damage. So that's why I'm currently running that. And obviously burn resist is always nice to have. Uh, for our gloves, I am currently running Savage Gloves. Savage Gloves, again, is super duper valuable. Um, for PvP, because typically in PvP, a lot of people are running around in the open or are going from cover to cover or so on and so forth. So a lot of times you're out of cover. 13% crit for that is just so valuable. It's insane. Uh, it does have assault rifle damage, critical hit damage, and uh, critical hit chance with first aid heal. Assault rifle damage, SMG damage is what I would want on mine. If you're running an M1A, you know, the marksman damage could be super valuable as well. Uh, this is what I'm currently running, and this is what I got, so I was like, okay, at least I got one of the two, so I was pretty happy there. I do also have these stamina gloves that I would kind of want to run, but it does not have the damage that I want on it, and obviously it puts us below the firearms that I need, but I'm hanging on to them just because, you know, we'll see what happens with future patches. Uh, for our holster, we're using the Sentry Call Holster. Pretty much basic stats all across the board. It did get kind of low rolls there, but it has really high, uh, well, actually, yeah, it has decent stamina. And then it has a pulse critical hit. Uh, again, with the armor slot. Again, this is my PvP build. This is t this is just for PvP, not for PvE, although it does work in PvE. We currently run Sentry Call, and for those that don't know, Sentry Call has headshot damage bonus, damage to elites, and this bad boy this is probably the best talent currently in the game for pvp in my opinion uh and that's because every single time you land a headshot it increases the damage by 15 percent so 45 percent damage increase on the target basically like a little mini damage alt that you get to do uh assuming you can actually land the headshots uh, and I really find that a hundred times more valuable than Striker. And the reason why is if you look at Striker, uh, obviously it has these particular stats, but if you're landing every shot, Striker's better. But in PvP, unless you're aim hacking, you're not going to land every shot. It's just, it is what it is. You'll land a lot of shots, you're not going to land every shot. And every single time you're missing a shot, you're losing 2%, which is just devastating i tried using striker for a little while and you know you're constantly able to get it kind of going and you'll get it over about 10 and then it and then you drop and the reason why is because people are jumping around uh also when you're fighting people in pvp um you might kill them very fast because the damage is so high right now they go down and then when they go down you you shoot some extra bullets after they go down and there you go your stacks that you just built up you already dropped off and then every single second you're losing one as well. And I tried it where I would go around and like shoot mobs to stack it up, but it was just so like tedious to kind of like 
pull out a pistol and go da 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 on a mob, otherwise they die too fast, and like I could stack it up a bit, and it's constantly losing, and it's just like, it was so annoying to build up. If I wanted to run striker, I would run three priest striker with two piece sentry, and that's to get the headshot damage with the uh, critical hit damage, and then maybe run like reckless until reckless gets patched in 1.2. Um, but that's pretty much going to do it for my build. I'm going to just scroll through this real, real quick. Uh, critical hit chance, obviously, that's going to put us at the cap. Um, I don't know if this is on my assault rifle or off my SMG, but with the Savage, which is the 13%, that pretty much puts us at cap. Um, then we have the critical hit damage, headshot damage. Uh, we'll scroll through here. The main thing that I really want to go over is down here. Armor. Armor is, it used to be one of the most valuable stats in the game, in my opinion, before the patch came in where it increased damage so much. Armor I still view, uh, view as extremely valuable. Uh, the cap currently is 65%. They did not raise the cap, so you cannot, like, they increased damage so much, but resistance and, and being able to eat those bullets didn't go up. So everyone just gets melted. So I really like having 65% I go solo rogue a lot. I need to live as much as possible. The current, um, six, to get 65%, it's 4,640 armor, and that'll put you at cap. So we're actually seven over, which is really, really good as far as min-maxing. If you have to go over it a little bit more than that, that's fine. If you're a little under, mess with it. See if it's worth getting that extra one point or if it's worth the extra five points. Some people say they don't need it. Some people say they absolutely love it. This is what I run. This is what I've been running. It works for me. I like it. Uh, all damage resist is 10, but that's because of Reckless, which gives you the d decreased damage. Um, and then, you know, I'd prefer to have more burn resist and shock resist uh, for fire bullets and shock nades and shock turrets and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, we got what we got and we make it work. And that's pretty much going to do it on our build here. Uh, so I hope this was kind of helpful and informative. Again, this is a PvP build for PvP. Yes, my gear can be a lot better than what it is, but to be perfectly honest, I'm just too lazy to continue farming out to just minorly adjust my gear the way I want it. Um, we'll see what 1.2 holds for us. I hope this was informative to you guys. Thank you so much for all the fucking love, and I will see you around and see you in the dark. Zone. <laughs> Thank you.